7. Let's go ahead and get started with these problems. Here we go. Let's, do, let's take a look first of all at numbers 1, 2, and 3, okay? The directions say to match the trigonometric ratio with its name. Well, guys, we've talked about this. And that's definitely not what we've talked about. Hold on one second. So. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So B opposite over hypotenuse would go with sine. Uh, cosine, cut, so cut. Um, adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. Adjacent over hypotenuse of C would go with number two. Then obviously letter A, toa, opposite over adjacent would go with tangent. You really need to have those memorized, okay guys? You need to know those. Okay, moving on to numbers 4 through 9. Use the given right triangle to find the uh, trigonometric ratio. So here we go. Angle A, so circle angle A. Come over here, this would be your opposite side. I'm going to use O, H, and A. This would be your opposite side. This would be your hypotenuse. This would be your adjacent. Sine of A, opposite over hypotenuse. Remember, the trig ratio for sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the answer would be four-fifths opposite over hypotenuse. Four-fifths. Okay, number five, we're going to circle angle A. This will be your opposite. This will be your hypotenuse. This will be your adjacent. And we're done with cosine. Now remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Three-fifths adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, moving on to number six. We're dealing with angle A, and we're dealing with tangent. Go straight across. This is your opposite side. This is your hypotenuse. This is your adjacent. So the tangent of A, well, tangent is toa, opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, four over three. So the answer should be four-thirds. Okay, moving on to number seven, sine of B sine of B. Well, circle the angle you're dealing with. Go straight across. This is your opposite. This is your hypotenuse. This is your adjacent, okay? So the sine of B would be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Three-fifths. So there's the answer. Three-fifths, okay? Moving on to number eight. We're dealing with angle B, so circle angle B. Go straight across. This is your opposite side. This is your hypotenuse. This is your adjacent sine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse, four-fifths. So the answer would be four-fifths. Number nine, we're dealing with angle B. So we'll circle B. We'll go straight across, opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. Now tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? So here's opposite, here's adjacent. So the tangent of B would be three-fourths, okay? All right, that's a really good review. Let's continue on. Numbers 11 through 14. The directions say to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the acute angles of the triangles. Okay, so here we go. They want us to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A. So the sine of A, the cosine of A, and the tangent of A. Then they want us to find the sine of B, the cosine of B, and the tangent of B. However, however, we can't do that until we know all three sides. Now students, there is a little bit of a leeway here. Not leeway, but balance to where I help you with the problems. But sometimes I feel like I, there are some things I really don't have to help you with. Um, you should know how to do it. For example, if we're missing a side right here in the right triangle, all that you have to do is use Pythagorean's theorem to find that missing side. And so I really don't want to take the time during a help video to do Pythagorean's theorem for you guys. That's, that's really math we should know how to do by now. So I'm just going to tell you, if you use Pythagorean's theorem, you will get a 6 right here. Okay, now let's start off with angle A, okay? So circle angle A, this would be, go straight across, this is your opposite, this is your hypotenuse, this is your adjacent, okay? So, um, sine is 
opposite over hypotenuse, 8 over 10. And of course that would reduce to 4 fifths. Cosine of A would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of, of A is 6 tenths. And of course that would reduce to 3 fifths. And Mr. Earhart, do we need to reduce these answers? Yes, you definitely do. Okay, tangent of A. Um, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 8 over 6 which of course would reduce to 4 thirds. Now let's find the three trig functions of angle B. So let's circle angle B. Go straight across. We're going to call this our opposite side over here. And of course this will be my hypotenuse side and this will be my adjacent side right here. Okay. Alright, sine of B. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 6 over 10 which reduces to 3 fifths. Cosine of B, well cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 8 over 10, which would reduce to 4 fifths. And then tangent of B, tangent is opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, so 6 over 8, which would reduce to 3 fourths. Okay, let's give number 12 a shot here. Alright, now first of all, before we get started, we've got to find the missing side. Alright, and it looks like we're missing the um, hypotenuse. So if you use Pythagorean's theorem, you will get 25 for the hypotenuse, okay? So the two acute angles are D and F, so we're going to find the sine of D, cosine of D, tangent of D, and then the sine of F the cosine of F and the tangent of F. So here we go. Let's start off with angle D. Circle D. Go straight across. This is your opposite. This is your hypotenuse. This is your adjacent. So the sine of D would be opposite over hypotenuse. 7 over 25. The cosine of D is adjacent over hypotenuse. 24 over 25. The tangent of D would be opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, so 7 over 24, okay? Now, um, that's the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle D. Now let's find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle F, okay? So circle F, that's the angle you're dealing with. Go straight across, this is my opposite, this is my hypotenuse, and this would be my adjacent side right here, okay? So here we go, sine of F, opposite over hypotenuse, 24 over 25. Cosine of F, adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, 7 over 25. And then tangent of F, tangent of F would be opposite over adjacent, so 24 over 7. Okay, pretty simple. Moving on to number 13. Okay, we're going to have to find this missing side right here. And so, um, uh, hold on one second here. Okay, Pythagorean's theorem would be um, 1 plus 4. I believe it would be square root of 5. Let's see, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Yes, square root of 5. So, we're going to find the sine of g, the cosine of g, and the tangent of g. And then we're going to find the sine of h, the cosine of h, and the tangent of h. Alright, so here we go. Let's start off with the sine of g. <coughs> we're dealing with angle g, so we're going to circle g. Go straight across. This is my opposite. This is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent. So here we go. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 2 over square root of 5, but remember that's not allowed. We can never have a radical in the denominator, so we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 5 over square root of 5, okay? So 2 times the square root of 5 is 2 square root of 5. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just 5, okay? And that is how you have to write your answer, okay? No radicals in the denominator, okay? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 1 over square root of 5. Multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 5, and you get 1 times square root of 5 is square root of 5, and square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just 5. Please don't reduce these inside and outside. 
outside numbers. They both have to be inside numbers, or they both have to be outside numbers, okay? All right, let's take a look at tangent of G. Tangent opposite over adjacent. Well, that's 2 over 1, which would be 2, okay? Now, let's go ahead and go look at angle H. Angle H here. <coughs> So really, 
there's still work to show on the next eight problems. Okay, all right, number 15 is the sine of 48, and that's going to be 0.743. Okay, so you would type sine and then 48 and then enter. Okay, most calculators, some calculators might have it that you type 48 first and then sine, but most of them nowadays you type sine first and then 48. Okay. Number 16, cosine of 11, type that into your calculator, excuse me for yawning, and you should get 0.982, okay, 0.982. Number 17, type this into your calculator, the tangent of 85, the tangent of 85, and you will get 11.430, 11.430. Cancel, leaving you with four over one or four. Now, I've 
accuracy to finish, we divide both sides by 0 0.8090. Okay? Now, if you do that correctly, you're going to get 4.94. I'm going to put 4.9. So the length of R is 4.9. Okay? So let's slide this over here. Now, students, think about it. We didn't use sine because it did not have adjacent. We just used cosine. Now let's go on to tangent and see if that helps us find our last side here, which is S. So the tangent of what angle? 36 degrees equals opposite, which is S, over adjacent, which is 4, S over 4. Okay. Now, tangent of 36 is just a number, and it's going to be 0.7265. So 0.7265, I'm getting that by typing that into my calculator, equals S over 4. Now, to get rid of your fraction, we know to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is 4. So I have 0.7265 times 4, and I'm going to get 2.91. I'm just going to put 2.9 equals, multiply this side by 4, multiply this side by 4, and it equals S. So the answer to S is 2.9. Let's try a couple more. we got three more of these. They're really good practice, okay? Now, let's go, th let's go through this step by step by step, okay? First of all, I'll show you the answers were correct here. There's the answers. Now, first of all, step one, do you know two sides? No, you don't, but if you did, you could use Pythagorean's theorem to find the third side. Next, do you have one of your special triangles? No, you do not. So we're going to have to use trick ratios, okay? And so here we go. Um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? Now, Now, um, first of all, do I have, do I know 
two sides. No, I do not. Okay. Next, um, is it one of my special triangles? No, it is not. So the only way to solve for these two missing side lengths is to use my trick functions. Okay. Now, circle the angle you're dealing with. 70. Go straight across. This is your opposite. Go straight across from 90. It's right hypotenuse. And this will be your adjacent. Now, if you'll look, guys, um, if you'll look, actually, I should have uncovered these answers so y'all can see the correct answers. Now, if you'll look, guys, what side do we know? Do we know the length of the hypotenuse? No. Do we know the length of the adjacent side? No. Do we know the length of the opposite side? Yes. So you want to use the trig functions that have opposite. You don't want to use the one that doesn't. So here we go. The sine of 70 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. 9 over V. Now, obviously, the sine of 70 is just a decimal. So sine of 70 is 0.9397 if you round correctly. And then your denominator is V. So we're going to multiply both sides by V. If you multiply the left side by V, you get this right here. If you multiply the right side by V, you're left with 9. Now, in order to get V by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 0.9397. So with your calculator, you would type in 9 divided by 0.9397. Alright, so let me quickly do, do that with my calculator. And I'm getting 9.577, so I'm going to put 9.6. I'm going to round to one decimal place. So V equals 9.6. So come over here, put an equal sign, 9. Six. All right. Okay. We use the sine. Now let's try to use tangent. Okay. So here we go. Tangent of what angle? Seventy degrees equals opposite, which is nine, over adjacent, which is W. Okay. Now tangent of seventy is definitely a a number. So tangent of seventy is uh, two point seven four seven five. sides to get x by itself by 0 0.3746. 
if you do that correctly, I'm getting 16.016, so I'm going to round that to 16.0, or just 16, so x equals 16, okay? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at tangent. Maybe tangent can help us solve for this last side over here, um, the adjacent side, y. So here we go, tangent of 22 equals opposite over adjacent, all right? Well, obviously, tangent of 22 is a number, and it's 0.4040. equals 6 over y. Now, the denominator is y, so we're going to multiply both sides by y. So the left side is 0.4040y. The right side, when you multiply 6 over y, times y, y is y over 1, you're left with 6. Okay, so now we're going to take 6 and divide it by 0 .4040 to get y all by itself. Okay, and the answer would be 14.850. I'm going to go ahead and put 14. Rounding to one decimal place, 14.9. 14.9. Okay, all right, pretty good on that section. Let's move on and take a look at a couple of word problems, all right? Number 27, now listen carefully. I guess I should have showed you the answers. And the answers are just like we said right there, okay? And same thing back here too at number 25. There's your answers. Alright, okay, moving on now. The vertical drop of a ski slope is the difference in elevation to the top of the top and the bottom of the slope. A ski slope has a vertical drop of 80, met 80 meters. The angle of elevation is 22 degrees. What is the length S of the slope? Now, let's get a picture of this. Um, don't try to get all fancy and draw all trees and people sk uh, skiing and stuff like that. Just draw a triangle. Here's the hill. Here's the hill. They ski down right here. They ski down this hill. Okay. Now, here's the right angle. This line right here, students, this line right here is 800 meters. Now, how do I know that? Because look what it says. The vertical drop of a ski slope is the difference in the elevation of the top and the bottom. Okay. So, going straight up, um, this distance here will be 800 meters. Now, the angle of elevation is 22 degrees. That means this angle here, with the line going up like it's elevating, would put 22 degrees here. What is the length S of the slope? So here's your slope right here. Now here's the length. I mean, here's the uh, skiers. They're going to come skiing down the slope, okay? And so, um, they're asking us for the length of the S slope, okay? So here we go. We're dealing with 22. If you go straight across, that would be opposite. This would be hypotenuse. And you're welcome to um, label this side here if you want to, adjacent, okay? But there's really no need to, because all they've asked us to do is find the, the, um, the length S of the slope and the slope is the actual area that you ski down, okay? Now, uh, students, so what two sides am I dealing with? Opposite and hypotenuse. What trig function has opposite and hypotenuse? Sine does. Sine is O over H. So I'm going to write sine of, now what angle am I dealing with? 22 equals opposite, which is 800 over hypotenuse, which is S, okay? So first of all, sine of 22 is a number. That's the first thing we have to realize. 0.3746. And then secondly, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is S, to give you this right here. Now divide both sides by 0.3746. So 800 divided by 0 0.3746. And I'm getting this for S, 2,135. 0.6. 
and that should be um, how long the slope is. Let me check the answer real quick to make sure we got that right. And yes, that is correct. Okay, all right, let's move on to number 28. Now, number 28, you're going to see is pretty much like the last problem, almost identical. Okay, only instead of looking for the length of the slope, you're going to be looking for the length of the vertical drop. Okay, okay, the length of a ski slope is 2,625 meters. The angle of elevation is 20 degrees. What is the vertical drop? Okay, well, here we go again. Here's the mountain they ski on. Okay, now the actual slope here is 2,625 meters. Okay. Now, I'm trying to find this um, vertical drop from here down to here, so I'm going to call that my X. Like the, I think they tell you to call it V right here, so we're going to call it V. Now, um, the angle of elevation is 20 degrees, so it means here's the horizontal, and you rotate up to an elevation of 22 degrees. So we'll put a 22 here. All right. Now. Um, do we know two sides of the triangle? No. Are, is, it my, are these, is this triangle one of my special triangles? No. The only way to solve this triangle, or to solve for V, is to use trick, trick ratios or trick functions. So, circle the angle that you know. This is my opposite side. This is my hypotenuse. We really don't care about this side down here. We're not trying to find it, so we don't care about it. Now, the two sides I'm dealing with are opposite and hypotenuse. Which trick function has opposite and hypotenuse? Well, we know by now it's sine. So the sine of 22 degrees equals opposite, which is V, over hypotenuse, which is 2625. Now, we know that um, the sine of 22 is a decimal number. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the sine of 22. And I'm going to get 0.3746. So 0.3746. Four, six. Now, we know to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is 2,625. So I'm going to multiply 0 0.3746 times 2, uh, 2625, and you're going to get 983.34. Um, and actually, I'm getting something different. And you know what I did wrong, guys? I used 22 instead of 20. Really sorry about that. This is 20, so I should have used 20 here. So I apologize. I hate it when that happens. So we'll make that a 20 real quick. And now we're almost um, caught back to where we were. 0 0.3420. Oh. So this is 0 0.3420. 0 0.3420. Okay, sorry about that. So the sine of 20 is 0 0.3420, and then we're going to multiply that times 2,625, and you will get 897.8, which is the correct answer, 897.8. So we multiplied this side here by 2625. We must also multiply the right side by 2625, which gives you V, okay? So there we go. Um, that's going to be the length of the vertical drop. Okay. All right, let's move on now to numbers 35 through 42. We're going to simplify radicals. So real quick, I'm going to write my perfect squares right here. And let's copy those so we have those. And here we go. Now, I'm not sure which one of these numbers will go into 243 evenly. Maybe none of them, okay? But what we're going to have to do is kind of work our way down through here. And right away, I see that 9 does. So instead of putting 243, I'm going to put 9 times 27. Okay, because 9 times 27 is 243. Students, listen, it does no good to put numbers right here in which at least one of them is not a perfect square. One of these numbers has to be a perfect square. Okay, it really needs to be, it really needs to be, excuse me for yawning. So, make sure that when you do this and you rewrite 
write this number here as a product of two numbers. One of these numbers must be a perfect square, okay? So, which one of these two numbers do I know the square root of? 9. So cross off the 9, put a 3 on the outside. So 3 square root of 27. Well, guys, we're not done. 9 goes into 27 again. So now, for 27, I'm going to put 9 times 3, okay? Then, take the square root of 9, which is 3, put a 3 on the outside. You do multiply those. So your answer is going to be 3 times 3 is 9. 9 square root of 3. 9 square root of 3. Alright, number 36. Same thing again, guys. Um, we're looking for a number over here that goes into 200 evenly. 100 does. Definitely. That's easy and fast. Watch this. 100 times 2 is 200. Okay, 100 is one of our perfect squares. Which one of these two numbers do I know the um, square root of? 100. So cross it off and put a 10 on the outside. So the final answer would be 10 square root of 2. Okay, 10 square root of 2. All right, number 37. Well, same thing again, guys. We got a 9 over here that goes into 45. So for 45, I'm going to put 9 times 5. If I can get this thing to change here, there we go. So for the square root of 45, I'm going to put 9 times 5. Now, which one of these two numbers do I know the square root of? 3 or 9? So cross off the 9, put a 3 on the outside, and we're left with 3 square root of 5. Okay. All right. Number 38. Uh, same thing again, guys. So here we go. Um, uh, 9 goes into 180. Um, 20 times. There might be a bigger number. I'm trying to think if there is. Um, 36, I believe, goes into um, 180. I think it goes in five times. So 180 degrees is 36 times 5. Cross off the 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So put a 6 on the outside, and there's really nothing you can do with the 5. You cannot um, break that down anymore. No perfect squares go into 5. So your answer is 6 square root of 5. So we're basically rewriting these radicals, or, in other words, we are um, um, simplifying them, okay? All right, this will be interesting here, guys. Okay, you're never allowed to have a radical in a denominator, so we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now, the square root of 12 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 36. Got it? And the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. But now, look, I know the square root of 36, that's a perfect square, is just what? 6. So now I have 6 over 3, and that would reduce to 2 over 1. So the answer is 2. 2. Okay. Alright, moving on to number 40. Number 40. Guys, you're going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 7, okay? So times square root of 7, square root of 7. Okay. So 14 times square root of 7 is 14. Square root of 7 and square root of 7 times square root of 7 is 7. Now, please don't start canceling numbers like this. They both have to be outside numbers, or they both have to be indoor number, inside numbers. Now, notice these two numbers here are in outside numbers. So, 7 goes to 7 once, 7 goes to 14 two times. So, 2 square root of 7, or 2 on the square root of 7, would be the complete um, simplification, okay? And I don't think any of these I've been showing you the correct answer, so I'll do that real quick. On 36, there's there's the answer. On um, 37, there's the answer. It matches. 38, um, we're getting 6 square root of 5, which matches our answer. And now number 39, um, we're getting 2 for an answer, I believe. Yes, 2. Now we're moving on to number uh, 40, and the answer was 2 square root of 7. There we go. And then number 41. Now, I don't want this denominator to have a square root, so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 5. 30 times the square root of 5 is 30. The square root of 5. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. Notice these two numbers are outside numbers, so we can reduce them. 5 becomes a 1. 30 becomes a 6. We're used
goes to 6, square root of 5, okay? And that is the correct answer. All right, moving on to number 42. Now, students, watch this. There really isn't a lot you have to do here, okay? On number 42, first of all, is there a radical in the denominator like this to get rid of? No, okay? All right. Um, can I simplify the square root of 5? Well, you tell me. Are there any perfect squares right here from this list that would go into 5 even though we'll know? The only thing I'm left to do is reduce inside or outside numbers. Well, I have two outside numbers right here, and 3 will go into both of them. This 3 will become a 1, and this 15 will become a 5. Okay, so now I have square root of 5 over 5, and that's totally allowed. That's totally legal, totally legitimate, um, because you have your radical up top here. Um, so it should be the correct answer. Let's see if it is. Square root of 5 over 5. Yes, it is. All right, now moving on to our last four problems. These will really be challenging, so please pay, uh, please pay close attention. All right, here we go. Okay, students, four problems left, and we're just about done here, okay? If I can get this thing to work here. And there we go. I'm kind of froze up there. All right, here we go. Number 43. All right, now, these are pretty tough, so if you'll listen to me, I can really help you, but you need to listen, okay? Now, look up here. I mean, how in the world? Can we find what X is? We don't know angles. We don't know the length over here. Well, one thing they tell us is the tangent of A is four-fifths. Now watch. Please watch what I do, students. I circle angle A. Okay. So go over here. This is my opposite side. This is my hypotenuse side. And this is my adjacent side here. Now, tangent of A is opposite over hypotenuse, right? We know that. So think about this, guys. That means opposite is by 4 and adjacent is 5 but that's not true look at your adjacent side your adjacent side is what 15 and I'm saying up here my adjacent side should be 5 because tangent is opposite over adjacent so if they made a mistake in the book no not at all not a bit look this will be really tough to see but watch this I did not mean to do that um, hold on one second. It's going to be tough to see, but watch. I want you to draw a similar triangle off to the side, okay? I want you to put a right angle, and I want you to put angle A right here and circle it, okay? Now, this is opposite. This is adjacent down over here, okay? Hypotenuse. Now, tangent of A is opposite. Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. 
range. Now, these two triangles are what? Similar, so I can use ratios. So I can say x plus 45 over what side? 3 equals 45 minus x over what side? 2. Okay? So now cross multiply. 2 times x plus 45 would be 2x plus 90. Because 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 45 is 90. Now 3 times 45 would be 135. And 3 times negative x is negative 3x. Okay? Now, let's get all of your x's on one side. So bring your negative 3x over and make it positive. Let's take your positive 90, bring it over, make it negative 90. And let's see what we have. 5x equals 45. Okay, 2 plus 3 is 5x. 135 minus 90 um, would be 45. And so then divide both sides by 5. And there we have it, guys. Pretty tough problem, but it would be x equals 9. Okay, x equals 9. All right, number 45 here. Let's go ahead and draw a similar triangle. There we go. Angle C is over here. Angle C. Now, cosine is two-fifths. Now, remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So, go across, that's opposite. So, this would be my hypotenuse right here, and this would be my adjacent. Got it? Now, um, so what do we have here? We have um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 2 for the adjacent, 5 for the hypotenuse, okay? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, let's set up our trig ratios, our proportion. X changes to 2 as X plus 21 equals, um, let's see, uh, X changes to 2. X plus 21 changes to 5. Now let's cross multiply and uh, see how we do on this. Alright, X times 5 would be 5X. 2 times X plus 21 would be 2X plus 42. Alright, so 2 times X, 2 times 21. Now bring your 2X over and make it a negative 2X and you're left with 3X equals... 42, divide both sides by 3, and x equals 14, alright, 14, let's see if that's right, yes it is, alright, number 46, okay, let's go ahead and draw a similar triangle, okay, these two triangles are similar, um, we're dealing with angle D, so here's angle D right here, this is my opposite side, we're dealing with tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, so here's angle D, opposite would be 8, this is hypotenuse, so adjacent would be 5, so there we go, now two triangles are similar, set them up and use your trig ratio, or use your, um, your proportions, x plus 13 corresponds with 8, which equals 13 minus x, corresponding with 5. Let's cross multiply. 8 times 13 is 104. 8 times negative x is negative 8x. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and slide this over here. Not sure why I put it there. Just so we have some more room. Alright, there we go. 8 times 13. 8 times negative x. Um, now, 5 times x plus 13. So 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 13 is 65. All right. Now, let's get the x's on one side. I'm going to bring the negative 8x over. Make it a positive 8x. Get the constant terms on the other side. Bring your 75 over. Make it a negative 65. And you're left with um, 5 plus 8 is 13x. And 104 minus 65. Divide both sides by 13, and 3 
equals x. Pretty tough, long assignment, but really good practice problems. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, I hope this homework hopefully has been helped to you guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.